What up, y'all? It's the Kid Reason. Today, I'm going to give you five reasons why the Atlanta Falcons will dominate this season. So I'm going to give you all five just off top. We have an elite quarterback room. We have an elite running game. We got a brand new coach, Kyle Pitts, and the fans. Let's get into it. All right, so let's start out with the elite quarterback room. So if you're a Falcons fan, I'm pretty sure you know the last couple of years have not been fun in the quarterback position. Yes, we have people try to come in and alleviate our pain at that position but unfortunately we were not successful now i'm not here to rank on desmond ritter or marcus mariota because they came in here and they did the best with what they had so salute them dudes for coming in here trying their best doing the best they could with what they had you know being in a position where we didn't have an elite quarterback back there willing and dealing it really showed you know and after matt ryan left it really really showed you know, all those years we had Matt Ryan, I think there was a stability there where, you know, the game might go left or right, but you know that Matt always going to show up. He going to give 110%. Now, of course, toward the latter years, the performance started to wane off. But like, let's be clear, like we had stability at that position, some that we never had before that long in a long time. But now we're in the new era. And you know what it means to be in this new era? We have a Kirk Cousins. Now, yes, people are going to say Kirk, he's coming off a Achilles injury. You know, is he going to be the same? Is he going to be able to come back and be willing and dealing? Look, I've seen the practice footage. I've seen the training camp footage. Brother, straight to me. All I see is willing and dealing. You know, there was a time, especially the last couple of months or the last couple of years when training camp would be around, they would never show who was throwing the ball. You would just see the ball sailing in the air and then somebody catch it. Or you'll see a ball overthrown, but you'd be like, who, who, who threw that? Now we know exactly who threw that. Shout out to Kirk Cousins because we have stability at that position again. I think it's so reassuring to know that we also have a Michael Penix for backup. Now I know a lot of people say, why did you draft him? You gave Kirk Cousins all that money. Look, pretty sure y'all just saw what Jordan Love got, right? and he ain't won no super bowl you feel me but he has proven himself in a playoff game but it makes the money that we gave kirk cousins look like all right we'll run with it i'm cool don't even trip on it i definitely feel like we made the right decision in drafting Penix because he can sit and he can learn from one of the best in the game right now i didn't want to say it but it does feel like matt ryan 2.0 you know what i mean because i feel like kirk can give you at least two, three more years. Now, will it play out like that? I have no idea. And barring something happens to Kurt, barring something happens to Penix, we have Tyler Heineke back there. Now, I know a lot of people will say, uh-uh, uh-uh, not Taylor Heineke, but do y'all not remember when Taylor Heineke came here with the Washington Redskins and carved our ass up? Now, I don't think that Taylor Heineke's play is based on what we saw last year or the year before. I just don't believe that. I believe it was more so the scheme. I watched a lot of the practice footage and the training camp videos, and it said one thing that really stood out was the spacing. And if you know last year, our game was more so running the ball, stuff like that. And a lot of the passing formations were very condensed. Like there'll be times where they'll hike the ball and it's two players running in the same position. Like why, why is it two receivers running? It's, too, it's crowded over there. Like use the field, you know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. And of course, you know how the season ended. But that quarterback room is very exciting. And I'm really looking forward to these preseason games to see Michael Penis get out there and throw that ball around. And I know it's going to get people excited, but please, y'all, hold your horses. He's a rookie. He's going to be just fine because he's sitting and he's learning from the best. All right, so number two, we have an elite running game. Now, of course, you know we got running back one, B. John Robinson. What else needs to be explained? Bijan was putting on highlights last year and he wasn't really working with a lot. Let's be honest. There was a lot of times where he had to kind of create plays out of nothing. So this year, I feel like we're going to put a lot of emphasis on that run game because we have a quarterback back there that you got to respect. Last year, they didn't respect our passing game. A lot of teams, they played in the box. This year, that is not the case. This year, we're going to run the ball. And not only that, we're going to run the ball with finesse. I'm looking forward to see B. John Robinson rolling out, catching that ball out the backfield. And I'm also looking forward to seeing him making people miss tackles, breaking ankles, you know, the usual. Also, you know, we got a Tyler Algier tucked back there somewhere in the cut, right? 
Oh, and if you didn't know, he got a thousand yards in his rookie season and we have him for a backup. Yeah, good luck with stopping that. Anyway, Tyler Algier like to run shit over. So I'm looking forward to see Tyler Algier run people over this entire season because I'm pretty sure he's looking forward to it. I love our running back room. I'm always adamant on respecting the running back. I feel like in today's age, you know, fullbacks, running backs, we don't really give them a lot of credit. But that's where the game is made, baby. That's your bread and butter. Run the damn ball. Just run the ball. All right, so number three, new coach, new energy. Raheem Morris brings a different energy to this team that we haven't had in the last couple of years. Now, a lot of people will say, well, you haven't done anything yet. What can you be excited about? You haven't seen anything. I've seen enough as far as being a coach is concerned. See, a lot of times when you are coaching a team, you have to lead the team. The team has to have an identity. And usually that starts with the coach. Now, if you have a coach that's high energy, he's going out there and he want to perform at his best, your team is going to follow that. Look at Dan Campbell in Detroit. I would play for Dan Campbell. Nigga, I would run through a wall for Dan Campbell. And the same with Raheem Morris. And I'm pretty sure his team feels the same way. Also, a brand new offensive scheme, Zach Robinson from the LA Rams. This is going to be amazing. And I know our receivers are gonna eat. Also, I know our running back's gonna eat because LA had a pretty decent run game. Now, dude got hurt, but you know, before he got hurt, they had a decent run game out there. So I'm really looking forward to that. We have a huge staff and Raheem made sure to hire a huge staff because I feel like when you do stuff like that, you know you're going out here to win because next year, a lot of these players and coaches are gonna be plucked from the team if you're a winning team, it's bound to happen. So he built his squad out to have people around him that he can learn from. And like you said, also he's bringing that energy to the field. We need that. We haven't had that in a very, very long time. And I am looking forward to see what these guys do this season. Number four, Kyle Pitts. Okay, very controversial pick when it happened. I know a lot of people was like, bro, you selected a tight end? And then the next year you get a run. What are you doing? Listen, a lot of people gave up on Kyle Pitts. If y'all don't remember, Kyle Pitts had a thou wow in his rookie season. Matt Ryan was feeding him the ball like here, here, here. Hotcakes, pancakes, everybody eats. A thou wow yards. Now, yes, the last couple of years it has not been nice for Kyle Pitts, but I believe that all comes down to scheme. You also will have some people argue that Kyle Pitts was being lazy. He wasn't running his routes correctly. He wasn't running them all the way. Well, one, he was playing through an injury, right? And then two, a lot of times he was running ghost routes. He wasn't getting the ball. If he's this unicorn star player, why isn't your star player getting the ball? Why is your star player blocking on a jet sweep to Janu Smith for him to throw the ball in the end zone? Like galaxy brain, what are you doing? No, Kyle Pitts needs to be down the field, hands in the air, catching the ball, because that is what he's good at. That's what we drafted him for, right? So I'm definitely looking forward to Kyle Pitts unlocking his true talent this season because you already know Kirk Cousins loves his tight ends, bro. Same way with Matt Ryan. You know Matt Ryan loves his tight ends. Tony Gonzalez, wait, what? So that's what we getting this year when we getting Cousins, Kyle Pitts connection is going to be tight. And if you've been watching any of the training camp videos, bro, Kyle, first of all, how can you be that big and move that fluid on the field that fast? Like, what is happening right now? Do people not see this? Or, or am I the only one just looking at this? I know I got on Falcons gear, right? But still, even though my bias is showing a lot, do you see that? Do you see what we're cooking down here? Kyle Pitts will eat this season. You'd be a fool to not put the money on Kyle Pitts because I already know he's not going to be out there blocking. He's going to be going up the field doing what he's good at. So, yes, number four, Kyle Pitts, turn all the way up. And last but not least, number five is you, the fans, us, the fans, people that love the Falcons, people that have grown up with the Falcons, people that have been through hell and high water with the Falcons. Y'all know what it is, man. It's a family. At the end of the day, we all watch the Falcons lose in the Super Bowl. I remember where I was. I was in my apartment. We was eating crab legs. 
At halftime, I was dancing, talking cash shit. And then, <sighs> so we've been through some very painful moments as Falcons fans, but this year, the energy is different. People are excited because for the first time in a very long time, season tickets are sold out. Yes, season tickets are completely sold out. That's crazy. I haven't heard the Falcons say <laughs> the season tickets have been sold out since the Georgia Dome. And I'm just being honest. You know what I mean? So it's a very, very exciting time because I already know the fans are going to show up. I live close in around the area. So whenever it's game day, I already know how y'all get down. Y'all be out there playing music to 10 o'clock at night, turned up, win, lose, or draw. So I already know y'all gonna have that thing packed pregame. I already know the first game of the season. Y'all gonna have that stadium rocking because y'all, we done sold out season tickets. Now, I ain't buying no season tickets. But it is good to see that people are getting excited about Falcons football because we are a football city. We love our football. We just don't like losing. And, you know, as far as Falcons fans, we'll show up to the games, but don't nobody like to show up to a losing product. I don't care what league you in, what facet of business you in. Nobody wants to show up to a losing product. So shout out to the fans for showing up and showing out. Also, shout out to all the content creators out there. Now, I don't consider myself a Falcons content creator. Yes, I love the Falcons. But as you see from my page, I talk about whatever the hell I want to talk about. So I don't really stick to one topic all the time. But shout out to all the Falcons content creators, because over the years, I've been watching a lot of channels do their thing. And I'm going to name a few. So if I forget, please forgive me because I don't see everything. I'm just naming the ones that I usually tune into. So, you know, you got your Smitty Sports Machine. You got your Big Country. You got your Pound for Pound ATL. You got Atlanta Falcons Nation. You got your Jew Talk Sports. You got One Time for the Fan. You got the Falcoholic. It's so many podcasts out right now of Atlanta Falcons content creators that honestly, from game day to the next game day, from Sunday to Sunday, you got enough Falcons material to hold you over. So these are the people that, like I said, I've been listening to over the years, just in the cut, listening to Falcons commentary, agreeing with some stuff, disagreeing with some stuff, but all in all, I love what y'all doing. Keep doing y'all thing for show, for show. Like I said, I'm not an official Falcons content creator. I'm just somebody that love my team. And of course, you know, when the game's happening this season, I'm going to be popping out, giving y'all my after game reviews. And I know that's going to be fun because boy, I be having some opinions after these games. So I'm glad that I'm posting now and I'll be able to give y'all that front and center. But with that being said, those are the five reasons why I feel like the Atlanta Falcons are going to dominate this season. And we're running the NFC South, so I don't even... All y'all other NFC South teams, just move over, bro. Just move over, because it, it ain't no competition. Zero, none, zilch. But yeah, man, it's the Kid Reeves. And until the next video, catch y'all on the flip side. Peace.